properly. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the next but last act, here he comes. Are you ready to welcome onto this stage? That's the experience. I was waiting for that complete silence. Yeah. How you doing? Hey. All right. Now, I know what you're thinking, and the answer is yes. I am from the Middle East. I don't know if it's more the uh, swarthy complexion or this black and white facial rug, but Middle Eastern genes are very strong. We, uh, a lot of us are born this way, and literally this is how we come out. Fully formed and covered in hair. Like alpacas. It's just, you know... <laughs> and that's how you start life. <laughs> that's how I started life. It was a uh, Friday morning. My mom got into hospital. My dad's outside parking the camel. <laughs> the doctor's ready, the nurse is ready, and there's a vet on standby. It's the Middle East. You just never know. Okay. Now, I was out in record time. <laughs> The doctor took a look at me and just, I can't handle this, and he left. The vet took me out, stroked my fur, counted my toes and gave it to my mom. Muzzle told Mrs. Gill, it's a beautiful badger. My parents were over the moon. For one thing, they saved on baby oil. For me, all you need is just some warm water, a steel brush, and my back is glistening. <laughs> uh, my brother had been born a year earlier, and uh, he was white and smooth. <laughs> so when I turned up, it was the beginning of the Rainbow Nation. <laughs> One more of each of us, it would have been like Noah's Ark. <laughs> but my parents didn't have any more kids after me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Once you have a child and a badger, that's, that's a <laughs> We had a beautiful, beautiful childhood. Me and my brother were very close. We, uh, we had these wonderful games that we used to play together. In the summer in the Middle East, it's very hot, so uh, I, would, I would shed all my body hair and he'd collect it and stick it on and pretend to be me. <laughs> <coughs> we had uh, really cute baby books. He had uh, my first word. I had my first beard comb. <laughs> He had my first tooth, and I had my second beard comb. <laughs> it's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful time. <laughs> but the Middle East is a very, very difficult place to grow up. It's hot, and it's dusty, and life is just a constant string of vendettas about stolen goats from 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Everything in the Middle East is about stolen goats from 2,000 years ago. Okay, don't believe what you hear in the media. It's not religion, it's not who was there first, not about land. Everything is about stolen goats. <laughs> ISIS, the Arab Spring, Intifada. It's all because 2,000 years before CCTV was invented, somebody <laughs> broke into somebody else's barn and stole some goats, and we haven't figured out who it is yet, but the moment we do, there'll be peace in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> That's the aim of the game. <laughs> But I love growing up in the Middle East. Growing up furry in a desert environment really prepares you for life's challenges. <laughs> Which came in handy when uh, I told my friends that I was coming here to do stand-up comedy. Because they, uh, I got a mixed reaction. I mean, they were very supportive, but, uh, but they were nervous too. I said, well, Matilda, what, what if you bomb? So, well, I'm, I'm from the Middle East. <laughs> I'm expected to bomb. <laughs> But eventually, the wars and the constant disappearance of goats took their toll. <laughs> and my parents decided it was time to go. It was time to move us somewhere far away, somewhere safe. Somewhere where nothing much happens. Somewhere that welcomes immigrants with open arms. <laughs> That's how we ended up in Australia. <laughs> 
Now, I don't know if you know much about Australia, but they have a very unique way of welcoming immigrants. Basically, whatever physical stereotype you fit into, that's what they tease you about from the moment you get off the plane until the day you die. If you look for it, that's a wrap. Now, you don't even have to sound for it. So my wife is Sri Lankan, right? Her cousin Ravi, who was born in Sydney, grew up in Australia, never left the country. And he still gets, Oi Kuma, how's the curry? Now, <laughs> bear in mind, when we moved there, I was 10 years old and shaving twice a day. <laughs> I had dreadlocks on my chest. And every time I went in the pool, it looked like I was a sea enemy with a face. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, Link? What I'm saying is the kids had lots of things to tease me about, okay? Now, the white Aussie kids, they kind of went for the, the low baseline. They're just, oh, I'm a team, you bloody terrorist. How many buses did you blow up today? <laughs> there was a New Zealand kid. He was a bit more specific. Or specific. <laughs> He's like, oh, Nativ, bro, you got more hairs on your shoulders than fish in the sea. <laughs> but you know what the cruelest one was? This is fucking ironic. Do you know who the cruelest one was? It was Winston Wong. Winston Wong, the school nerd, him and his sister Eunice. Those two, every day, would wait for me outside the school. Now, these guys were so nerdy, even the teachers would give them wedgies. <laughs> Head of the chess club and the president of the Harp Society. Every day, those two would wait for me outside the school, like a Confucian tag team. And they weren't particularly witty, but they cut deep. I'd walk into the school and they'd go, Oh, Nativ, you are like crouching tiger, beard a dragon. <laughs> Nativ, you are like fairy lotus flower. <laughs> and then one day they crossed the line. They jumped me outside the school and they said, Nativ, you are like giant panda. And I go, hey, get it right. It's badger. <laughs> Thank you all very much.